The 5070 is the last to be released of Nvidia's 50 series, and a few Blender benchmark scores have come out. So how does it stack up against the other cards? And if you can get one and it's around $540 or pounds, is it worth it? Let's find out. If you've been excited about the new wave of GPUs that's hit the market, you've no doubt heard about the disappointment in the performance improvements, or frustrated that you either cannot get your hands on one, or the ones that are out there are way overpriced. Hi, I'm Mike, your creative tech chap, and let me show you a chart of all the main consumer cards going back around nine years, from the 10 series all the way up to the just released 50 series. Looking at the raw performance, the 5070 will be the ninth fastest consumer GPU for rendering in Blender. Now, I have removed a few of the D variants of the cards and laptop cards as well from the list. You'll see a lot of reviews of the 5070 and a direct comparison to the 4070. And it's amazing how many people, including Nvidia, forget that the card was replaced with the 4070 Super for the same price. So instead of the 17 to 90% increase you'll hear about, in my mind it's really only around a 2% increase, especially for Blender. You might be wondering if there's something special about my 5090 Founders Edition. No? I have it overclocked, but that's outside the scope of this video. However, when I've done it, I will pop a link to that video in the description when that is published. If you're enjoying these dives into tech and Blender, remember to like the video and subscribe for more like this in the future. Now let's see how the new up-to-date figures stack up against the previous generations. Now looking just at the 70 class cards, you can clearly see here that the 5070 slots really neatly between the 4070 Super and the 4070 Ti. Now there is something here that I've not done before and I thought it would be interesting to share, but with some caveats. I've said before that I feel MSRP or RRP is largely pointless as it's fraught with tons of issues. However, and indulge me here, let's have a look at the price per blender point for the main consumer Nvidia GPUs. Now this could be considered a value proposition for the cards, and if we look at the chart we can see a start difference between all of the cards, with some being much better than others, not necessarily based upon their performance. Now if we order this chart from lowest to highest, would you look at that? I genuinely wasn't expecting to see the 5070 top of that chart. With the 450 series cards largely known about, what about the competition? AMD's 9070 and 9070 XD are hopefully being released on the 6th of March. How will they compare? Now, time for a disclaimer. There is no Blender data for them yet, and this is an educated guess, so bring your own salt. AMD's card, unfortunately, cannot do optics. So I reckon we'll be looking at the performance around uh, the 9700 XT, all these namings, uh, for the Blender equivalent compute power. So that's going to be around 5,000 points for the 9070 XT and the 4,300 points for the 9070. Now, as I said, this is a pure guess as we don't have the results yet, but I'm eager to see them. So we're looking at 3080 to 4070 performance in terms of relative performance to other cards. However, both the 9070 and the XT variant will have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is more than those other two cards. VRAM is arguably just as important as render speed. Render speed is only one facet of using Blender, and another area often overlooked because it isn't reflected in that data is VRAM. It's somewhat misunderstood, and I'll be taking a deeper look at how Blender works with your computer in an upcoming video, so subscribe so you don't miss that. Now, VRAM is used for a lot of things. It contains all the geometry data you can see, it helps accelerate subdivision, it stores textures, and many other things. VRAM can have a much wider impact on your overall experience than just how fast you can render. Obviously, a balanced approach is best. Pairing a 5090 with an older, low-end CPU with not enough RAM would just be a waste, and it would perform worse overall than a mid-range CPU and a mid-range GPU. Although, that does sound like a fun test to run. Shall I do that? Let me know in the comments below. Now, personally, I'd rather have a GPU with more VRAM. All of these cards are blazing fast. Yes, the top cards look like they are miles ahead. And you know what? They are when you use that power. And most of the time, you will not. I was genuinely fine with my 3070, which is around 3,000 points. And then when I got my 3090, it really helped me be a little lazier with optimization. <laughs> I'm using these cards professionally, and being able to work faster actually helps test and trial things without 
all these bottlenecks. But even with a 5090, you can still be lazy and you can hit those limits incredibly quickly. If Blender is a hobby of yours, then you're likely to be fine with anything from a 20 series and up with at least eight gigabytes of VRAM. So I think that's around a 2070 and up. Now, my portable choice is a 16 gigabyte, 14 GPU core M1 MacBook Pro. What a mouthful. And that scores 442. Wow. Now, tech is an enabler, not a maker. Now, whilst a good GPU will make doing things in Blender smoother, if you want to know what a GPU is used for in Blender, check out this video next.